Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjay Pujare, uh, staff software engineer in Google Cloud and part of the gRPC team. I lead the uh, PSM security offering, uh, PSM being Proxella Service Mesh. Uh, in this talk, uh, I'm going to cover a gRPC Proxella Service Mesh intro and summary. Uh, I'll also talk about why we need security in the service mesh and why is it so painful today. Uh, I'll talk about how we added security to the gRPC proxy service mesh and how it works. Uh, I'll, I'll do a technical drill down uh, with a deployment diagram. Uh, uh, then I'll talk about what changes we made to the gRPC library, specifically the uh, gRPC programming API uh, for using this feature. And later on, I'll, I'll basically uh, describe a, a PSM security deployment, what it looks like in Google Cloud, as an example. Uh, towards the end, uh, I'll cover the future roadmap, and um, I also have a slide uh, that uh, has some links to resources for PSM in case you're interested. And uh, towards the end, uh, you know, we'll have a few minutes for Q&A. &A. Uh, now, I'll give a brief intro to Service Mesh. So uh, Service Mesh with proxies was the uh, initial model. Uh, this is how the Service Mesh started. Uh, in this, uh, Transparent proxies in red boxes uh, allow existing applications to be in a service mesh. The applications uh, shown in blue boxes uh, are not aware of the service mesh. Uh, the proxies implement these. Uh, is it me? Okay, cool. Uh, so where was I? Uh, okay, so the service mesh includes uh, features like service discovery, routing, load balancing, security, and observability. Uh, now, gRPC is a popular framework for service-to-service -service communication, as Randy just mentioned. And so we were thinking, can we add uh, service mesh features or awareness of the service mesh uh, to gRPC. So in this use case, applications would still be uh, somewhat unaware of the service mesh around them, but the service mesh policies would be transparently applied uh, to the gRPC traffic by the uh, gRPC library. Now, uh, let me uh, talk about XTS, uh, because XTS is frequently mentioned uh, in the context of uh, service meshes. Uh, XTS is a protocol for control plane uh, to talk to data plane entities. Uh, hence, it's called a data plane API. Uh, uh, XTS, where X stands for something, like an unknown quantity uh, in uh, equations, and DS is discovery service. So like discovery of clusters, routes, and listeners, et cetera. Uh, XTS was developed for Envoy, uh, but it is uh, pretty open and extensible for any kind of service mesh. So uh, gRPC adopted it and extended it for the proxy service mesh. So when the pandemic was raging, <laughs> we were enhancing the proxy service mesh with gRPC. Our first release last year in June had basic load balancing and service discovery. Uh, over the past year, we added various advanced traffic management features like traffic splitting, circuit breaking, and session affinity. Um, so I'm kind of curious, uh, this audience, how many uh, of you have used a service mesh with a proxy? Maybe a show of hands. Okay, cool. Uh, and how many of you uh, know about 
uh, the gRPC proxy service mesh. How many of you have heard about it? <laughs> okay, not that many. Uh, okay. Now, before I dive into security, uh, so, so far I've talked about just proxy service mesh without security. Uh, so uh, just to recap, uh, proxy service mesh, uh, the current status, <coughs> there was a, <coughs> a previous KubeCon uh, uh, presentation by our product manager, Megan, uh, in May earlier this year that talks about uh, the gRPC proxy service mesh and what we had until then, uh, you know, basically the load balancing plus advanced traffic management features. So I've included links to the slide set and the video recording uh, here. Uh, at Google's traffic director side, there are a couple of blogs that talk about this. Now traffic director is uh, Google's implementation of the XTS control plane. Uh, the traffic director user guide covers proxy service mesh. And you can actually, uh, you know, get a test account, uh, I believe, with some uh, free credits uh, on Google Cloud and, and do a test drive of the proxy service mesh. Now, before I go into proxy service mesh security, uh, I, I kind of wanted to uh, summarize why is security so important in service mesh, right? Um, now, you can think of a service mesh as uh, the equivalent to breaking up a monolithic application and uh, what used to be in-process communication inside the monolith uh, is now RPCs over the network. And as a result of that, uh, these RPCs need to be secure. Uh, now, these RPCs are routed and load balanced as part of the service mesh orchestration. Uh, so we need security uh, that's well integrated with other aspects of the mesh. Uh, you know, things like routing, load balancing, and service discovery. Uh, as an example, uh, each endpoint uh, needs to be able to validate its peer certificate and identity using the control plane uh, supplied information. Uh, now, in this picture, uh, the yellow layer talks to the red layer, and the red layer talks to the green layer. And these RPCs cross network and infrastructure boundaries. Uh, the cloud-like lines show the various boundaries the RPCs have to cross. And the routing uh, across these boundaries is orchestrated by the control plane. So we need a compatible security configuration from the control plane for the endpoints to be able to authenticate and authorize their peers. And once that is done, uh, traffic is secure. Um, service identities are the foundation of uh, the service mesh, and these are verified through MTLS in a service mesh. Uh, server authorization and client authorization, now also known as RBAG, at least in our gRPC ecosystem, depend on service identities. Now, all of these things uh, ultimately enable a secure service mesh. Uh, there is another point I kind of want to make in passing. Uh, for a real effective security, we also need uh, certificates and keys to be rotated. Um, uh, do we want to burden the application developers with the overhead of uh, certificate and key management for doing that? No, so we ideally we would like the infrastructure and the framework together to do these things for us. And uh, that's where PSM security comes in. One more thing I kind of wanted to mention is if you really want to do MTLS yourself in your application, it's a huge pain today uh, because you have to do the certificate management uh, yourself. Uh, you, first of all, you have to modify the code to load certificates and use them uh, to create a TLS or MTLS connection. Then you also have to add code to perform uh, additional verification as per your uh, semantics. For example, only certificates with certain identities are allowed for certain services. And also, it's a headache uh, for uh, folks deploying and configuring your software. You know, they need to manage things like, uh, you know, putting certificates in respective directories, configuration files uh, that are needed uh, to kind of link to those directories, and of course, managing the code or the application that 
is going to make use of those uh, certificates in the directories. So, and you know, another pain point is what happens when the certificates expire and they need to be replaced. Uh, in many cases, you, you actually have to restart your application. Uh, so, uh, when it comes to proxyless service mesh with gRPC, we have kind of seen the advanced traffic management features I talked about, but what about securing this traffic automatically? And that is where uh, PSM security comes in. Uh, it gives you service-to-service -service, uh, security. Uh, now, uh, this is transport security, which is uh, MTLS for XDS-managed gRPC connections. Uh, just a refresher uh, on MTLS, it gives you authentication, encryption, and server authorization. I'll uh, talk about uh, server authorization uh, in a bit. Now, now, how does it all work, right? Uh, note that gRPC is an RPC framework in a library. Uh, it cannot do everything. Uh, we need infrastructure to provide us with certificates and keys uh, and have a way for gRPC to consume them. Uh, the XTS control plane is needed to orchestrate and secure connections uh, between the workloads uh, by pre providing the security configuration. And gRPC is the glue that combines infrastructure provided uh, certificates and keys, uh, XTS control plane provided security configuration, and it kind of putting it all together, it makes the traffic secure. Uh, so, I mean, another question to the audience, how many of you kind of were missing security uh, in the service mesh? and think that this would be like a cool feature, something that you thought might be interesting. So, okay. Uh, now, this is a pictorial representation of how it all works. Uh, I have the client in the yellow box on the left uh, sending RPCs uh, to the server in the red box over a secure channel. The blue lock on that line indicates a secure channel. Uh, both the client and server are XTS enabled and get their security configuration from the XTS control plane shown in blue at the top. Uh, the client and server need certificates and keys that are provided by the uh, underlying infrastructure to make it all happen. The green box uh, represents the infrastructure components uh, which include the certification authorities uh, or CAs uh, to mint the certificates, and a process to continuously generate CSRs and uh, to use them uh, uh, to request certificates, and a mechanism to make these certificates and keys available uh, to the gRPC workload using uh, uh, gRPC's plugin feature. So when all these things are put together, the client and server are able to secure their gRPC traffic. Uh, in a bit, I'll actually, uh, so I'll, I'll show an actual implementation of this in Google Cloud. Uh, some more technical details for those of you who are kind of familiar with XTS and specifically how XTS works in gRPC. Uh, I'm assuming some familiarity with uh, the existing XTS flow in Proxylist gRPC. Uh, I have three columns here, uh, one for the client on the left, uh, one for the control plane in the middle, and one for the server on the right. Uh, this shows the configuration steps from the control plane. Uh, here, the client is trying to reach uh, something like a payment.service and uses xts colon slash 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 payment.service as the target string. So xts resolves it. What I mean by XTS is the XTS code in gRPC plus the XTS control plane collectively, they resolve it, and the client receives uh, CDS and EDS. These are the XTS uh, messages uh, to help the client set up connections to the backend instances of the service. Uh, one instance uh, here, here is here with the IP address 10.3.19.7 and a certificate ID of mesh one slash cluster two slash SRV3. Uh, 
I'll, I'll talk about spiffy, the spiffy colon prefix later. Uh, but over here on the right, uh, the server in the red box receives LDS, which is a listener discovery service message to help it set up the listener socket for the service. Uh, in this uh, instance, the backend with IP 10.3.19.7 receives the config to set up a TLS listener and to bind it to the port 8000. Uh, when the server receives uh, a client connection, the server applies what is called a filter chain from XTF, uh, and that filter chain contains the required TLS configuration for the transport socket. Now, the idea of filter chain is you can actually have different security configuration for different clients. So the filter chain has a filter chain matcher, and you know, based on the matching that is happening, the server is able to actually use different security configuration for, let's say, different IP addresses, different networks, and all that stuff. So the filter chain has config to use uh, the certificate with the cert ID of mesh one slash cluster two slash SRV3. This is just a made up ID uh, for the current client connection. Uh, so as you see, both the client and the server receive the required configuration to set up MTLS connections uh, between them. Uh, so this configuration includes things like the certificate and keys, whether it should be a TLS mode or an MTLS mode connection, and server authorization uh, information. Again, I'll, like I said earlier, I'll talk about server authorization in a bit. So the design and implementation details of the work we have done uh, is as follows. Uh, we created a GRFC. Uh, a GRFC is an RFC uh, or a spec in the GRPC ecosystem to describe the design. And I have provided the link here. The GRFC covers the programming API, which I'll cover in a bit, uh, the implementation of the security flow, and something new. What is that something new? That something new is the certificate provider plugin framework, uh, which is used by GRPC to get the required certificates and keys. Uh, the stuff described in the GRFC is uh, implemented in uh, GRPC Go, C++, Java, and Python. So you can try this. Uh, uh, to use a PSM security uh, because we had a public preview back in May for all four languages. And I'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, now, some more details about the certificate provider plugin. Uh, so GRPC was the first uh, one to propose the certificate provider plugin framework in the XTS ecosystem. Uh, this is an extensible framework that enables various, uh, including custom mechanisms, to get certificates. Uh, uh, these uh, extensions or plugins are loaded and configured locally uh, using a bootstrap file. Uh, the XTS control plane uh, just references an instance of a configured plugin. So as an example, the XTS control plane might reference an instance called XYZ, which is looked up in the bootstrap file. Uh, GRPC expands XYZ uh, uh, to a plugin name and configuration, and if necessary, it will load the plugin. Uh, it will use these instantiated plugin uh, to get certificates and keys for a channel or a server. And GRPC also makes sure uh, that it has set up a pipeline to properly uh, uh, you know, a, a, a pipeline is properly set up between the plugin and the uh, consuming channel or server. The pipeline is dynamic, which means when certificates and keys are updated, uh, the updates are immediately reflected in the channel or the server. Now, this simplified interface allows uh, both Envoy and gRPC to use uh, this interface. Uh, this is made possible because of the indirection provided between the implementation and the XTS protocol. It uh, abstracts out the certificate provider implementation in gRPC. Uh, 
we currently have a plugin called File Watcher that watches certificates and keys in the file system. Uh, some more uh, stuff. Uh, this is a pictorial uh, representation of the certificate provider plugin framework and how it works. Uh, a channel in the blue box on the left is configured by XTS credential. Uh, the same thing on the server side. Uh, uh, server connection, which is shown in, uh, in the yellow box, uh, is configured uh, using an XTS credential. The XTS credential sets up uh, a certificate provider and an advanced TLS handshaker. Uh, it sets up a pipeline for the certificate provider to provide dynamic certificate updates to the TLS handshaker. Uh, so the certificate provider uh, continuously get periodic updates, <coughs> certificate updates, uh, and gives it to the handshaker. The advanced TLS handshaker is uh, responsible for uh, channel or the server connections TLS handshake based on the, the certificates provided by the certificate provider. Now, as you have seen, uh, we kind of depended on external components to make this whole thing work. So what exactly is the value add of the gRPC library, right? What's the functionality added by gRPC? So within gRPC library, we have a new programming API. We have a new XTS implementation of what is called a transport socket config. Uh, in gRPC, we also implemented the certificate provider plugin framework and how it is indirectly referenced uh, via XDS. In gRPC, we also extended the bootstrap file schema uh, to add uh, fields required by the certificate provider plugin framework. And uh, of course, as part of that, we also implemented the file watcher uh, certificate provider plugin, which supports dynamic uh, certificate and key updates uh, of file-based certificates and keys. Uh, now, let me talk briefly about Spiffy. Uh, I had mentioned Spiffy earlier for service identities. Now, this is not really a gRPC thing, but uh, this is a new spec or standard for identities in a service mesh. So a Spiffy service identity is assigned to a microservice and encoded in the services certificate. And the service uses the certificate both on its outbound, uh, which is on the client side, and the inbound or the server side. Uh, a sample Spiffy implementation in Google Cloud encodes a trust domain uh, and identity within the trust domain. Um, uh, the trust domain in, uh, is an identifier for the trust infrastructure, and in Google Cloud, it is typically the Google Cloud project ID because the trust infrastructure is associated with the project, the Google Cloud project. And the, the rest, the remaining part of the Spiffy identity is, uh, is, is a unique identity for the service. And in our implementation with GKE, it typically is the Kubernetes uh, namespace name and um, the service account, the Kubernetes service account for that uh, particular uh, part. So uh, with Spiffy identities, uh, uh, it enables server authorization, uh, and server authorization uh, replaces the traditional host name check that happens in HTTPS. It, uh, Spiffy identities also enable a client authorization or RBAC uh, using the Spiffy identities. And now, the client authorization is not really part of uh, you know, PSM security. Uh, it's a, another feature that is coming soon. So how does one use this stuff, uh, for example, in Java? Uh, the example in this slide is from the GRFC. You can look it up and uh, see uh, this example there. The usage in C++, Python, and Go is similar. Uh, there is an XTS channel credential that you supply to your channel builder, and this credential tells gRPC uh, to use XTS supplied security configuration. Uh, there is a similar uh, server credential on the server side that instructs gRPC to use XTS-supplied security configuration for the server. 
Uh, now, I wonder what the uh, insecure channel credential uh, I used inside the create method here. Uh, this is a fallback credential. I'll talk about that in a bit. Now, XTS channel credential is a way for a caller uh, to opt in uh, the use of XTS security configuration. Uh, note that a caller can use a different credential, uh, for example, TLS credential with a channel, in which case the XTS supplied security configuration is ignored, even if uh, for routing, load balancing, et cetera, the XTS configuration is used. Now, in this example, uh, because of the XTS colon scheme uh, used in the target string, XTS colon slash 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 payment dot service, the XTS name resolver and eventually the uh, XTS load balancing routing config is used, but the security configuration from XTS is not used. Uh, something about uh, the f uh, notion of fallback credential. Uh, so an XTS credential also takes uh, something called a fallback credential, which kicks in if XTS doesn't supply a security configuration. So instead of choosing to treat this as a plain text or insecure communication, a caller can tell gRPC to use the fallback TLS credential as I have shown here. So where can you deploy and test this stuff? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can get a test account on Google Cloud and use the traffic director user guide uh, with the section that talks about Proxilla service mesh security and try this out. The main elements of this, uh, this offering is traffic director, the XGS control plane, something called Google CAS, uh, which is certification authority service, uh, then, of course, GKE, which is the compute uh, engine uh, or the compute infrastructure you have to use. The user guide will uh, help you understand the flow, uh, and uh, you can act, there, is a, there are a set of instructions uh, you can follow. So let's look at uh, the previous diagram, which I have modified to show the Google Cloud implementation using Traffic Director. Uh, we have the gRPC client and the server. Traffic director is the XTS control plane supplying XTS configurations to the uh, client and the server. I have the file watcher plugin inside the gRPC certificate provider uh, framework that makes use of the something called GKE mesh certificates. Uh, GKE mesh certificates use GKE workload identities and use spiffy encoding of those identities. Uh, and GKE integrates with Google CAS uh, to mint certificates and to make them available uh, to the gRPC workloads. Now the four bullet points at the bottom right describe the layers bottom up. So at the bottom I have the CAS a certificate infrastructure to mint certificates. And then I have the layer above that which is the GKE to CAS integration then about that, I have GKE supplying the certificates to the pods where the gRPC workloads are running. And at the top, I have the traffic director uh, as the service mesh control plane, which is orchestrating the whole thing. Uh, so that was about PSM security. Um, so the, I'll talk about some roadmap items in this area. Uh, I, I did talk about uh, something called XTS uh, authorization or RBAC uh, that is described in a GRFC A41. I have uh, provided a link here. And there is something new uh, called a SPIFI Federated Trust Bundle uh, for proper federation uh, uh, as per the SPIFI spec. In this, what happens is uh, there is a map uh, of a trust domain to root certificate uh, so that you don't use the same uh, root certificate to validate all the trust domains. Uh, most probably we'll use something called a configurable certificate validator, uh, which is an XTS extension point to support this federation of trust domains. One more thing that, uh, that could be coming is uh, more certificate provider plugins uh, based on uh, user demand. 
There's one more interesting thing, uh, which is uh, uh, something called a handshaker service or secure service agent, where the TLS handshake is offloaded to the agent. And now the advantage of that is the certificates and the private key are never shared with the uh, user space application. Um, so this kind of prevents exfiltration of certificates and keys because these are uh, minted by our uh, certificate, uh, you know, the certification authorities. Um, another potential development is Envoy adopting the certificate provider plugin architecture, and uh, this will uh, facilitate uh, deployment of uh, interoperable Envoy and gRPC workloads uh, in the same service mesh. Uh, so this is my last slide. Uh, basically has links to uh, various uh, resources to get more information. The five GRFCs, uh, PSM security, Java channel server credentials, and you know stuff like uh, OZ uh, that I talked about. Then a couple of links uh, to uh, Google Cloud blog uh, for an intro to this feature uh, in the context of Google Cloud. And of course, there is the uh, traffic director user guide um, uh, for traffic uh, for security with proxyless service mesh uh, using gRPC. So that was it. And questions? Okay. So we've got just a couple of minutes for for questions here. Maybe I'll uh, throw a couple from online. If that's okay. Right. Yeah. Sure. So, so. Um, there's a. Uh, I think maybe for some of the folks newer to gRPC, some questions about um, how does um, the, the effort here, um, is, is it uh, something that can be abstracted to other environments, or is it just specifically for gRPC, any support for HTTP2, things like that in the mesh side of things? I mean, as far as I can see, it is specifically for gRPC in terms of abstracting it out or kind of reusing it for other frameworks. You could probably use the ideas, like using XGS to orchestrate stuff like that. But the actual design and the implementation we have done is kind of very gRPC specific. Yeah, it's so. really about how gRPC is driving XDS and, and those components. Right, right. And it's specifically about, you know, if you look at the gRPC channel and server architecture, it's kind of very tightly integrated with that. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone in the room with a question? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, is this compatible with? Like if you build an application with gRPC and it's not part of a, it's not deployed in a mesh, can this connect to the mesh without having to deploy a proxy then? Uh, so when you say it's not deployed in a mesh, uh, you're saying there is no uh, control plane. Yes. Well, okay. The control plane exists elsewhere, but you're deploying it onto like uh, instance that's not part of the mesh already. Uh, yeah, uh, that. I can't think of a way to make it work because gRPC needs the control plane uh, to orchestrate many of these things. So if it can communicate with the control plane, then it'll work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So maybe one more question? This is uh, kind of similar, but will uh, gRPC proxyless work on a mesh that's not Google Traffic Director, say, if I'm on... Yeah, yeah, it is supposed to, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, we kind of... Uh, so... Uh, I mean, I, I talked about Google Cloud implementation because that is something that has been tested and works and all. Otherwise, everything we have done is uh, conforming to the XDS protocol without any Google-specific extensions or Google-specific implementation. So, yeah. You can, you can take a, a control plane, uh, I, well, like Istio and all, and I can and try this out. Fantastic. Sanjay, thank you very much. Okay. Great talk. Thank you.